Today let's talk about metabolism in menopause and perimenopause and how the Lumen device can help. Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks so much for joining me. I am a functional medicine doctor, registered dietitian, and family doctor, and I talk about perimenopause, menopause, what you can do to boost your metabolism, balance your hormones through this rocky time. I also have a lot of videos on gut health, if that's something you've been watching me for. Well, this was a bit of a shift last year where I changed to the hormone balance videos, but you can also check those out too if you're interested in gut health. I have worked with lots of women on menopause and perimenopause, and I've also worked with the Lumen device a lot, so I'm going to talk about namely metabolism in menopause today and late perimenopause too, as well as I'll touch on early perimenopause, and then also how the Lumen device, which is a metabolic tracking device, can help you during this crazy time. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please follow or please hit the like button and um, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Generally, they're every two weeks. So if you're navigating menopause, that means if you're postmenopausal, you've gone a year without a period. And if you're perimenopausal, you're everything on the years leading up to that. It's really hard to diagnose perimenopause. I have lots of videos and blogs. I have a blog, perimenopause.help, that will help you figure out where, or try to figure out what phase you're in. Because there's phase one where you have more of an estrogen dominance in perimenopause. And then there's phase two where you're getting closer to menopause. So estrogen and progesterone are both dropping. So when you're navigating this kind of roller coaster of hormone changes, you kind of need a lot of different uh, tools in your toolkit. Sorry, I'm at work and there's some noise going on outside. Um, so you need some different tools in your toolkit. And the, the um, Lumen device is one of the tools that I really like. But first, before we get into that, let's talk about what happens to your metabolism in perimenopause. Now, you don't have to take notes or anything. I have a whole um, blog on this um, on my perimenopause.help, and it's the same title, so it's easy to figure out. So you're, you do typically, many women have, sorry, I have a wobbly table. Many women do have uh, weight gain in perimenopause and menopause. And that's because um, you do see changes, like I said, in the hormones. And when you have changes in your hormones, you have changes in your metabolism, you have changes in the fat deposition. So it could be easier for you to store fat in your abdomen and upper thighs. And I do have a, a great video and um, blog on cortisol and perimenopause because a lot of that has to do with cortisol balance too. And I use... Uh, the Dutch test quite often to look at women's cortisol and their, their estrogen and progesterone balance. So that's something to consider is that you do have weight gain as a common reaction. Not everybody has to have it, not every woman has to have it, but weight gain can happen and I know it's frustrating just like my device today that won't stay up here to for my camera. Um, so it's frustrating and the average weight gain can be anywhere from seven to 10 pounds or more. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, more about the impact of um, the me metabolic changes that happen. So you can have unexplained weight gain, like I was saying, around the midsection. Difficulty losing weight, it can be much harder to lose weight and the rules all change. That's what I always talk to women about and that's what I've experienced, is the same things that helped you lose weight before don't necessarily work in perimenopause and menopause. You may need to change your workouts, not do as much cardio, maybe do more strength training. I have lots of videos and blogs on that. Um, change the way you eat, but perhaps you thrived before on a higher carbohydrate diet and now you maybe need to go to a more moderate or lower carbohydrate diet. And that's where the Lumen can really help you figure that out. Um, changes in energy levels and sleep patterns. Now when your sleep patterns change, you can definitely have a change in cortisol levels and that can impact your metabolism. And then also just because you're not sleeping as well often, um, that can make you, you crave more sugar or processed carbs and then that can impact your metabolism. And then shifts in how your body actually processes carbs and fats. So it kind of leaves us as women very frustrated and not knowing where to turn. We'll have lots of resources on the channel for you to turn to and then hopefully that'll give you kind of a springboard to talking with your provider about maybe some hormone testing and, and maybe approaching it with some of the recommendations that I have on my channel. 
but there's also the Lumen device. So the Lumen device is a tracker that um, tracks metabolism. It measures your carbohydrate, exhaled carbohydrate levels, and that helps you determine if you're burning fat or you're burning carbs. Typically all with the Lumen when you're fasting and that's your most important breath. So when I say breath, what I mean is you turn your Lumen device on, you have an app on your phone, I can't use it right now when I'm using my phone, but you breathe in, I mean, you breathe out, and you breathe in. It's like, so the fasting breath is the most important breath on the lumen tracking and that will tell you if you're burning carbs or fat while fasting so typically you want to be in fat burning mode when you're uh, fasting and that would mean a lower lumen score so like a goal of a one or a two it does take some time for your lumen to get to know you so you may have higher scores in the beginning and then it'll guide you usually into like a lower carb diet until your scores get down into the lower range Later in the day, like after exercising or after eating, you'll be at a higher score and that's normal too. So after um, a carb rich meal, for example, um, you want to you know, be able to convert that carb so you wanna burn through those carbs. Um, and then, like I said, after certain workouts, um, your body only has a certain amount of carb stores. So to conserve those, your mitochondria will prefer using the carbs for shorter distance um, exercises and then for the more endurance they'll use fat so scores can change based on your workouts um, but recent research this is on a web to touch on particularly with perimenopause and menopause with the lumen device found that it does change in your menstrual cycle so in perimenopause you still are having a menstrual cycle so if you're in the estrogenic phase which a lot of women in early perimenopause are seeing really a big estrogen dominance gap between their estrogen and their progesterone so they're in a more estrogenic phase or women that are just cycling regularly in the first half of their phase um, you're going to see significant increases in the carbon dioxide that you exhale into the lumen device and that would mean um, you know higher scores so you would it would guide you the lumen device would guide you to eat lower carb in the first half of your cycle or in your estrogen dominant phase either in when you after women and this and it was over 3,000 women and that they worked with that had used the lumen and, and and they tracked their cycles and their their scores so women that were in the ovulation phase and then later in the lower estrogen um, premenstrual phase where you're kind of building up the progesterone more, the, sco the scores on the lumen were lower. And then it was a more moderate carbohydrate diet usually with a lot of women and um, a mild, not low fat, but like is not as high of a fat diet and moderate protein. Um, and so it just shows you Earlier in the, the cycle, in a regular cycle, when you're more estrogenic, lower scores, lower carb. Later in the cycle, higher lumen scores and a higher carb diet. And perimenopause, it can be unpredictable. That's where the lumen can help guide you because your, your scores will vary based on the hormone changes. Now, what about menopause? I, I mentioned menopause in the intro, in the title. Well, menopause, the studies that were done with lumen with menopause um, and that's when you've gone officially a year without a period they looked at the women using the lumen device and those were that were on hormone replacement therapy and not on hormone replacement therapy and so if you have questions about hormone replacement therapy i've talked about it a little bit in some of my other videos and i with my patients will use bioidentical when it's appropriate i don't use non-bioidentical so um, menopausal women, when they were in their um, postmenopausal phase, they showed on their lumen devices that they had reduced metabolic flexibility, meaning they couldn't go very easily between burning fat and burning carbs. And so they had limited morning fat burn when they looked at this study of, of menopausal women. Um, and you really want to be burning fat in the morning, as I mentioned, as opposed to burning carbs. HRT, so bioidentical hormone replacement therapy they just referred to it as HRT on here so I'm not sure 
if they parsed out whether the the participants were using bioidentical or just regular hormone replacement therapy. But regardless, they found that HRT helped menopo menopausal women move back into morning fat burn and then helped their metabolic flexibility. And so that can show you that you, it's just another tool you could use um, if you are on hormone replacement therapy in menopause. Uh, the Lumen device can help you determine if you're in fat burning or carb burning, or if you're not on HRT, it can do the same thing. But just if you are on HRT, it may you be, may be more metabolically flexible, reflected in your scores with the Lumen device. So it's nice to have these tools because sometimes it feels like you're in a no man's land, no pun intended there, <laughs> with menopause because you're guessing a lot, the rules have changed, you don't quite understand your metabolism anymore because it, I've gone through all this because it's shifted so much that the more tools we have, the better. I'm gonna, and in one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna talk about another tool that can help as well. So it gives you a little bit of a metabolic edge, helps answer some questions, helps guide you. So I do like my Lumen device um, for that, that fact, and it's, it's definitely helped me understand my metabolism and helped me be more metabolically flexible because I was keto-ish, vegan, keep, not vegan, but vegetarian keto-ish for a long time. And that just kind of got me into that rut where I wasn't burning, able to um, burn carbs very well, so or go into fat burning mode very well. So, um, it and I wasn't able to be flexible, so if I did, that's what I was really trying to say, if I did go into eating carbs again, then it would just kind of throw everything off and I wouldn't be able to recover very easily. So this has really helped me do that and then give me more energy and feed my mitochondria. A lot of their more recent um, information from Lumen talks a lot about mitochondrial health and how the Lumen can help that. So not just metabolic, but you know your metab metabolism has a lot to do with your mitochondria, which is your powerhouse of your cells. I talked more about that in the blog, so you can reference that at perimenopause.help. If you want a discount code for a Lumen device, they have given me an affiliate discount code that I will put into the um, description and you can save some money on it. Um, it does come with an app that is paid for. Some people get frustrated that they have to pay for an app, but I feel like you can use that app for a few months and then you know maybe understand the metabolism more, not necessarily have to use it, but a lot of people love the app. I do love the app as well. Um, but just so you know up front that there's a paid app after you pay for the device. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you want to refer to the blog, that should be helpful. And then I um, have some more upcoming uh, videos on menopause and I have plenty on perimenopause that I've already covered. So definitely hit the like button and the share button if you find that this would be helpful for anybody that you know. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.